What's going on, Lead Gen Beast? It's your boy, Matty Ice Leads for Locals. We've got an awesome video for you today. This is going to be a go high level tutorial showing you step by step how to create an awesome automation. And we're going to be combining trigger links and custom values. So if you're a SaaS agency owner, this is the type, these are the types of automations that can really make your SaaS product stand out. It's really, really powerful. Basically, what we're going to be doing is uh, sending or, or triggering certain actions based on uh, certain links that people are clicking. Uh, now, if you're not an agency owner, of course, you can do this for your own business as well. You probably wouldn't need the custom values. But uh, either way, stick with me to the end on this. I'm going to show you step by step exactly how to create this. I'm going to show you uh, an example, kind of how I came up with it. Uh, just trying to think of how to make my SaaS product uh, better and better. Um, the really powerful thing about this, I think, is when uh, if you can track uh, using something like trigger links, if you can track when people are actually clicking on certain things like maybe an order form, a sales page, appointment page or something like that, and then have the system check to see if they completed that action. And if not, you know, let's go ahead and send another email, another text, voice drop, phone call, notification to a team member, salesperson, whatever. Uh, because the prospect is in, it's, you're, you're pretty much top of mind at that, in that moment because they're actively clicking on your links. This can significantly increase appointments, uh, sales, whatever. Right. So that's what I'm going to show you how to set up. Also, I've got a, a, an extra kind of like bonus automation. It's just kind of it's just separate from the one we're going to be building. But I'm going to share something else really cool that I learned how to do and go high level. Uh, it has to do with PDFs and Word documents and stuff like that uh, when people upload them uh, into your form. So make sure you check that out, too. All right. My only ask, as usual, if you find the video helpful, please smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Check out all the links in the description. Uh, i got tons of tutorials on go, uh, go high level, free master classes and on marketing and stuff like that. So check that stuff out. And uh, if you enjoy this type of content, you want to support the channel, best way to do that is to go through my Go High Level affiliate link, guys. Uh, it's a two-week free trial down below. Really, really appreciate it. Let's so rock and roll. All right. <clears throat> so the first thing that uh, we need to do, it, well, I, actually, let me give you a rundown of how this is going to work. So basically, <clears throat> so if we go to settings, custom values, you can see here, uh, This. Uh, so I'm inside my SaaS product. I have a lot of custom values here, right? And custom values are amazing for saving you a ton of time when onboarding new clients. And again, even if uh, you're not a SaaS agency owner, custom values, they could save you so much time. Like if you make a change to your logo, for example, instead of having to go into every single uh, funnel page and email or wherever you have your logo and update it um, individually, you could just update the custom value and it, does, it, it changes it on everything, like wherever you have that custom value, right? So. The benefit of this type of automation is if we have lots of different links, uh, again, you, you know, you're getting multiple clients and uh, every client is going to have their own individual link, right? Uh, for certain pages. Okay. In this case, I'm going to use my ERC system as an example. Uh, I set up uh, an ERC funnel, uh, it's ERC tax credit. Uh, it's one of the systems or uh, one of the products that I created a marketing system for inside of my SaaS product, right? And <clears throat> we have a qualification survey. So we take them to a page where the business owner answers a series of questions, provides information about their business, and then uh, my client will contact them to see if they qualify. And hopefully they do. They move forward. We make the sale, right? Now, every client is going to have a different URL here. Okay, so I was thinking to myself, all right, so if I wanted to create some type of automation that, you know, if someone clicks on the ERC qualification survey in this example, uh, it could be whatever it is in, in your business, but and, and they don't complete that survey, what can we do? What can we send to them to try and get them to complete that step? Right. That's really where this came from. So uh, what, what uh, we want to do here is grab the custom value which contains the URL of the page that you, you want to track. So th this would normally be an order form, appointment page, some type of qualification page like this, right? The next step in your funnel, it, um, it's usually going to be after someone uh, uh, requests your free lead magnet. Although, uh, yeah, it's going to be after someone gets uh, basically onto your list, right? You uh, have name, email, and phone number, right? And then you're moving them through the funnel. So I'm going to grab this custom value. We're going to go over to custom fields. And oh, custom fields, my apologies, not custom fields. That's going to be later. Uh, that's the bonus one. Uh, we're going to go to trigger links. All right. So we go to marketing and trigger links. And what I want to say about this too, just a quick side note on this, guys, is always test things out for yourself. Because um, I actually asked uh, Go High Level Support if I was able to do this uh, before I kind of went down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out how to do it. 
And they said, no, that's you, you can't put custom values inside of trigger links. And look, nothing against Go High Level Support. I think they're great. Um, but there's a lot of things, a lot of features inside of Go High Level. It's impossible to keep track of everything, like every possible little thing that you can do. And uh, I was curious, like, you know what? I'm just going to try it, you know, because custom values work pretty much everywhere inside of Go High Level. Let's see if it works for trigger links. Sure enough, it did. Nothing against support. Uh, it is what it is. My point is always test things for yourself, guys. All right. Because um, if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be sharing this awesome automation with you right now. So we're going to click add link here. And we're going to, uh, I'm going to name it, let's see, you know, ERC qualification survey. All right. So name it, whatever your custom value is. And then you're just going to paste the custom value in. I usually just get rid of the extra space in there. I don't know if that actually makes a difference, uh, if it'll screw up the, the uh, trigger link or not, or the, the custom value, but whatever. Uh, let's click save. And the, um, let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay. So once we have the trigger link, um, then this is what you would put in your marketing, right? So when someone opts in for uh, using this example, we offer a free ERC tax credit guide. Okay. And then the next step in our funnel is this survey page to see if they qualify. Uh, it's basically the prospect requesting a phone call from my client. So, you know, we do all the emails and text messages and stuff like that. But before they fill out the survey, we're sending emails, uh, you know, uh, just educational content. Every single email has a link to the survey page to request a call to see if they qualify, right? So instead of putting just the custom value or just the URL inside of your emails, or if you're putting links in your text messages, wherever you're usually sending links, you're going to use the trigger link instead. All right. So how you would do that is if I go into emails and we'll go to our templates here, I'll just give you a quick example of how the trigger link works. All right. Let's find ERC. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so here, here's an example of a follow-up email that we have. So we're sending follow-up, you know, educational content, uh, trying to, you know, educate them, get our, our emails open and hopefully get them to click to request a call. Okay, great. So we're going to go into this email and I would, uh, again, instead of using the standard URLs and custom values, like I normally would, and I'll show you what I mean here once it finally loads. <clears throat> okay. So down here at the bottom, I always have a button that uh, goes out to the next step. So you see here, I have currently the, uh, the actual custom value for the, for the, the link URL. Okay. But instead, I, uh, what I want to do now is put in the trigger link right here. So I just click this little tag button trigger link and here it is. Okay. So now what we're, uh, and of course, make sure you save it. Whenever somebody uh, clicks that link, I can now create an automation to check to see if they completed that survey. And if not, we can send a separate email, text message, voice drop. I could notify my client like, hey, someone just clicked to request a call. Looks like they just got busy. Why not give them a call right now? You know, see if, the, uh, see if they, they pick up the phone, whatever. Uh, same thing with sales. I actually set this up for a client in a, a totally different industry is the, the, the beauty industry. Uh, she markets to salon owners and uh, it's like continued education stuff. So what we'll do is uh, if someone clicks on the order form and it, they didn't purchase, then we'll send a text like five or 10 minutes later, like, hey, did you get an opportunity to complete your order? Right. <laughs> it works really well. And uh, it's pretty easy to set up. Let me show you. So we're going to go to automation here. A couple of basic things that we need to set up. I'm just going to do a test workflow here. Uh, let's see. There we go. All right. Our workflow trigger is going to be trigger link clicked. Okay, you're going to select the actual trigger link. All right, and let's go. Uh, let's go ahead, and we want to do an if else because we don't want to send the email, text, voice drop, etc. Uh, like, hey, asking if they completed this when they actually did. Right? Uh, that's just unprofessional. That's stupid. Um, it's not necessary. So we want to check to see if they actually complete that action. And actually, before we do that, uh, we're going to do a wait action. So let's give it 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes. All right. Then we're going to do the if else. All right. We're going to select, uh, there's a couple of different ways to do this. You could use an opportunity stage. You could, um, I typically like to use tags. Uh, that's just my preference, but it's up to you. Uh, I'm going to do, I think it's under contact details. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So we're going to do tag, uh, includes 
And I'm going to find that ERC tag because whenever they complete that survey uh, in the work, and because obviously I have a workflow for that, we add a tag so you know we can send different marketing to them and just keep track of everything. Uh, completed ERC qualification survey, great. We're going to click save. So basically, what the system is doing when when someone clicks that link to the ERC uh, qualification survey, it's going to wait 10 minutes and then it's going to check to see if they have that tag. If they do then we don't need to do anything because they already requested, like completed the survey, they requested the call, or maybe they made the purchase, whatever, right? So uh, your, your condition might be, uh, let's see, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of different uh, uh, conditions that we can do here. Um, custom values, uh, they usually have opportunities. It might be because I don't have a domain, I don't know. Uh, but usually they, they have opportunity stages as well. But anyways, uh, tags are usually the best way to do it, but uh, hopefully you get my point. So yeah. let me fill that out again really quick. There we go. All right. So if they have that tag, then we're just going to do nothing. If they don't have the tag, then that's when we send the text, the, the email, maybe you do a voice drop, maybe you notify a sales team member, right? So we can do a text. All right. I'm not going to go into like what to actually text there, but uh, you know, keep it simple. It's nothing complicated. Like, uh, Hey, Mr. Prospect, uh, did you get an opportunity to, uh, fill out our short ERC questionnaire to see if you qualify for that tax credit? That's it. Simple question. That's it. Just ask a basic question. Did you get a chance to complete your order? Did you get a chance to book your appointment? That's it. That's all you're doing guys. You would do the same thing for the email. Uh, I like using email templates, uh, because you can like the, the, the designer templates, cause you can put the button at the bottom or images, you know, clickable images and stuff like that. So, um, but either way, uh, the email would basically ask the same question a little bit longer and it would have a link to, uh, to go back to the order form, the appointment page, the survey, whatever. All right. Another one could be, uh, let's see, where's, uh, internal notification. So again, if you have, uh, uh sales team members, you want to keep them busy with, with good leads. This is a great way to do it by tracking the activity of your list. When they're top of mind, uh, when you're top of mind uh, in, in their head, that's a great time to, to contact them. So, you know, you wait five, 10 minutes and then send an email or do an internal notification to your, your sales team member. You know, hey, this person just uh, was about to book a call. They didn't finish it. Give them a call to see if they want to schedule or purchase or whatever, right? And uh, uh, make sure you publish this. And then uh, let's see, we can do, um, I would probably do allow multiple as well. Uh, because <clears throat> let's say, uh, let's say they go, th they click the trigger link, they go through the workflow, you're still not able to get in touch with them. But then maybe, I don't know, two weeks later, they do it again. Uh, I mean, we would want to trigger it once again, I think. Uh, I don't see any downside to doing that. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, that that's the trigger link and custom value workflow. Uh, for me, the, the biggest thing was um, adding the custom value inside of the trigger link because you can add whatever URL you want inside the trigger link, but being able to add custom values is a whole new uh, ball game for for SaaS agencies because that allows you to create some really powerful stuff inside of your uh, inside of your SaaS product. So I'm I'm super excited about it. Let me show you the uh, the bonus one really quick doing the the PDF documents. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm in a lead broker here. So I'm just going to, I'm going to do this, uh, send internal notification. We're going to do an email. So this, uh, there's a, obviously some different use cases for this. I'm just going to give you the example for my SaaS product on how we're doing this. So my SaaS product is for the business loan industry. So we're typically getting like bank statements and having people upload documents as part of their application. So if you're in a business where you're, you're having people upload something, then you can actually send this to yourself. Uh, obviously it's inside of the, the contact field as well. I'll show you that in a second, but this was something that clients have uh, requested for me being able to uh, send the actual documents that people uh, submit like on, on your form or whatnot. I'll show you that in a second, but I just want to, uh, while I'm in the workflow, want to show you how I, uh, how to set this up. So let's say um, you have somebody uploading a word document, a PDF document. You want to send that to a sales team member to, 
you know, an underwriter or whatever, someone that's going to take a look at those documents, then uh, we can actually click on custom values, contact, and you need a custom field for this, but I'll show you that in a second. We're going to go to custom fields and you can see here, I have bank statement one, two, three. Um, and I broke these up because when I was testing this, uh, I uploaded three documents into one field, but it only would let me access one of the documents. So I broke it up into three. So if you're getting multiple documents and you want to send those documents to somebody automatically, then you need to have separate custom fields. Again, I'll show you how to create them in a second. But you basically, uh, what I did here is I put like bank statement one, bank statement two. All right. And then right here, we would just insert the actual custom field here for bank statement one. Okay. Custom value. Bank statement two, so on and so forth. Okay. So we save that. All right. You got to, you know, put your, your username, you know, from email and you know, who you're sending it to and all that stuff. Okay. That's, that's pretty basic. All right. But um, I'm going to show you an example here. Um, I tested this earlier and this is what I got uh, from that internal notification. And if I uh, select this and just go to it, it'll actually open up this document and you can download it now. Right. So I think that's, uh, that's pretty cool. That's some, there's some really cool stuff that you can do with this. I have no idea what this, what this PDF is, but anyways, um, you can now, uh, download it, et cetera. So really cool internal notification that you can do. And the way you do this is the, the file upload custom field. So I'll show you, I'll show you my example here really quick on how I'm using this. So we have, uh, like I put together an actual application for my clients uh, inside of my SaaS product that they can use if they want. So if we go to that form. Man, starting to lag pretty bad here. Okay. All right. Loan application. So, you know, we're, we're just gathering like basic standard uh, information that you would get on a typical loan application here. But then at the bottom, I have three separate file uploads. And uh, to do that, you just go to custom fields and then add custom field, file upload, uh, and then you just name it and then you drag it onto the form here. And I like to make them required as well. And then uh, once that, uh, once they upload and they submit that form, you can then use that custom field, you can insert that custom field, that actual document that they uploaded right into your internal notification. So I think that's a, that's a really cool automation as well. You know, you guys can play around with that, but I just wanted to share some cool stuff that I've learned and that I'm putting together. Uh, like always, you know, uh, go high level just allows you to do some really, really powerful stuff. So hopefully this helps guys uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of this. And uh, if there's, if you have any requests, anything you want me to dive into, different workflows to test, whatever, let me know. Happy to make some videos on it, right? Hope you guys are crushing it. Matty Ice is out. See you next one.